Hi, I'm Mike Predko, Chief Designer of Memetics. And Memetics is a company that's mission is to interest and excite students in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Memetics' uh, roots go back to 2001, where the founders started uh, a robotics activity at the Ontario Science Centre. Over the next 10 years, we worked with over 12,000 uh, students uh, and their families and working with over five generations of robots. From what we learned, we decided to uh, create a company that was just devoted to this activity. And the reason for doing this is quite simple. 40% of the jobs in today's workforce require advanced math and science at the high school level. Middle school interest in STEM, the students about to go into high school, uh, their, ad, their interest level is at an average of 17% overall, 26 for boys, and girls are at one-third of that at 9%. This is reflected in uh, the high school enrollment rates for the different academic levels in math and science. Over the 10 years that uh, we were working at the Ontario Science Centre, we learned a number of things. One of the first ones being is that people are very positive about robots. It's something that uh, that interests everyone. It's uh, and you know over my life what I've discovered is that uh, everybody is interested in robots and dinosaurs. Uh, that's something that when you say either one you catch people's attention and I like to joke that the reason why I'm working with robots is because I don't know how to make dinosaurs it's a great way to bring uh, you know we talk about robots it's also a great way to bring parents into the educational process uh, it's a very positive activity where parents can work with their children and learn with them at the same time. I just caution is that you know parents will be a bit nervous because they are learning something new and will be concerned that their roles as parents may be usurped by an activity where they're shown to be not experts or whatever. So there may be so when you're working with that you want to be careful about that. But when you are successful it's really amazing and we'll talk a bit about uh, more about that as we go through here. But uh, you know, over the years at the Science Center, we've worked with four generations of, uh, of uh, participants in our programs. And it's quite an amazing thing to see uh, great-grandparents on the floor uh, with their great-grandchildren learning about robotics. It's, it's a, a very powerful activity. When we talk about, I talked about us having five different generations of robots. And one of the things that we discovered is Building a robot tends to be a problem. We talk about having a workshop where we say, or an activity where you're going to build a robot. When the robots have been built, uh, in almost everyone's minds, they, ha uh, they take the um, position that they're done. They've built the robot, and that's the end of the activity. And it's unfortunate because, you know, while there is some learning in terms of the mechanical aspects of it, uh, putting something together that's a positive experience, it's, it should only be the beginning of the journey and not the end of the journey that, it takes, uh, that happens. The other aspect is, and we talk about different products that we want to work with in terms of building, such as we did work with Mindstorms for a bit, is Mindstorms is an incredible product. It really is amazing. But when you look at the uh, robots that, uh, or the models, robots, whatever you want to call it, at uh, the LEGO site, um, what you very quickly discover is if you try to create it on your own is they can take up to 20 hours to build. It's an awfully long time for uh, a kid to do it. Now, a number of them will be successful at that. And what we found is at the end of the uh, process is they've done it. Again, we have the same thing with the build. They get it working. They like to see it work. Uh, but they're not interested in taking them apart again. Now, there's something that really kind of surprised us. And mindstorms can be a problem in a classroom be, uh, or anything that's being built because it does take up a lot of space when they're partially built. They've got to be uh, uh, put together and work through that. 
also problem we talk about building. Building can be a problem depending on the robots because uh, a lot of times when working with that you are working with chemicals in terms of glues, lubricants on, in some cases, uh, sharp tools, knives, screwdrivers, uh, clippers that all can be a problem, and then hot tools, namely soldering irons. Uh, we found that we just will not solder with uh, uh, students as we work through them. It's, uh, it's a distracting and somewhat dangerous activity. Um, when, the, uh, when we actually have a fully assembled robot, we really found a lot of really magical things happened. Children or students were much more willing to try uh, different uh, activities and experiment with the robots, much more so than with the robots that they had built themselves, which seems counterintuitive, but again it goes back to the idea that when you're told the activity is to build, or build something and you've built it, you're done. Um, the other, uh, also having a, uh, a fully assembled robot means that you have more time to teach concepts. And a fully assembled robot allows you to pick and choose your concepts to make it age appropriate for younger students. Another important issue that we learned and are learning again as we'll talk uh, as we get through this uh, video here is the importance of having uh, homogeneous computer systems when you're working through this type of activity is when you have one type of computer system you're going to get the same problems you're not going to have different issues with the uh, with different program uh, different programs have been previously loaded on the computers just something to watch out for in 2001 we formed memetics as a startup to, as I said to uh, interest and engage students in stem we took what we had learned from the previous 10 years as well as the five generations of robots we used from the volunteer program to create our own robot which we call the Jade Robot. This robot here as you can see it's called a track differentially uh, driven robot. Uh, what makes it unique is that it has all the sensors integrated into it again going back to uh, the need for a fully assembled robot. Uh, it has all aspect light and object sensors. It also has a user interface built into it. And this user interface allows um, the robot, uh, or allows someone to experiment with the built-in programs of it to see how robots work. Things like light following, line following, object avoidance, as well as using it. You can, there's a couple, there's uh, several different ways of programming the robot on the robot itself without using a, a, pro, uh, a computer, and these uh, programming tools are actually very sophisticated. Uh, and finally, this allows you to configure the robot for different operating modes as well as connecting the robot up to uh, a, a computer using a Bluetooth interface uh, for downloading programs and controlling it remotely. The robot can also be uh, programmed uh, using USB, but when we did our initial user testing uh, during the design process, we found that uh, users overwhelmingly preferred uh, Bluetooth. In fact, we couldn't find anybody who preferred USB uh, because it means that uh, there's no hooking up a wired connection. You're just putting the robot down on the floor, running it. If there's a problem stopping it, changing it, working it. It's actually a much more efficient process uh, for program development of the uh, uh, f for the robot. Uh, one of the things is you can program the robot in Scratch. This is something, uh, I guess, going into it, uh, you know, being an engineer, being someone who'd worked a long time, really felt that um, Scratch was something just for uh, an introduction to programming and robotics. But one of the things I've discovered is it's a very, very useful tool at uh, the professional level for creating uh, programs that uh, are very sophisticated, but can be created and edited very quickly um, without a lot of the uh, frustration of dealing with a text-based language. 
One of the things you might be looking at is when you look at the picture of the Jade robot is that there's no shell on it. As a startup, of course, we were told that we had to have an iconic plastic shell for the robot. And what was interesting and maybe a bit ironic was the uh, industrial design process that we worked through was to take their designs to uh, you know 200 customers and in this case we identified teachers as the customers uh, to show them what the robot uh, could look like and what would they prefer and what would they like to see in it. Uh, it was fascinating for us is uh, because along with that we took a uh, hand-wired prototype robot to show the user interface what we wanted to do with it. Literally all the teachers pointed to the hand-wired robot and said that's what they wanted for their students. They didn't want something that was covered because they felt that there's too much technology today that is, that is hidden, it's essentially arcane to the students, and it's somewhat scary is having a product that has uh, the componentry visible that the uh, students can touch, can see, that is labeled. That is actually a very positive uh, aspect of the Jade robot and one that uh, we've never had anybody go back and say that was a mistake. Uh, now having said that with the plastic uh, cover is the, the Jade robot is very tough and I really recommend any kind of robots being used in the classroom should be tough. Well, you don't want them rolling off tables. Uh, they, uh, they may, but you'll also have kids putting them on their bodies, uh, having them collide, uh, and generally having fun with them. And that's something that should be encouraged with a robot that is tough enough to survive this without any issues. As I said, the, even though the componentry is visible on the Jade robot, it actually is a, a pretty tough little beast. Since 2013, when the Jade robot first became available, we've been bringing, uh, bringing it and program materials to various schools in the greater Toronto area. Uh, in that time, we've worked with about 3,000 uh, students of varying grades from grade 2 up to grade 12. Uh, and I'm saying that because, as hinted be out, uh, above, we discovered the greatest age group for the opportunity for what we were doing for changing their attitudes was the middle school grades, six to eight. Uh, in these, uh, this is the age range that studies show uh, kids are making a decision about what they're good at, as well as what do they want to do in. Um, uh, in their careers, so it's something that we can uh, that you know we really it really is the right point for making that uh, difference. Also, was very interesting for me was to see how well girls performed, especially relative to boys of the st same age. Uh, you know, trying to remember back when I was a, um, a 12 to 14 year old boy, I didn't see any real difference in maturity or skills of girls at that age, but there really is a big difference. And this is an opportunity, or this is a situation where girls will perform at least as well as boys and give them a very positive um, uh, feeling and, uh, about STEM and their ability to succeed in that. Uh, we also talk about grades six to eight, we also, uh, in Ontario, we have uh, different programs uh, in the curriculum that we can work through here uh, very efficiently. Uh, for grade six, this is the Earth and Space Science strand, and uh, working with this is introducing the Jade Robot programming and going to a culminative project, having the Jade Robot being used as a science probe looking for water on another planet. Uh, this was done during the uh, spring of 2015 when the Curiosity rover was discovering uh, water and, and showing water on the Earth's surface. So this was actually very relevant and a very positive activity, one that they can uh, work with. For grade 8, robots work very well for the system strand, explaining the inter uh, interrelation between the physical world through mechanical devices and sensors leading back to control systems and how they work and how you create things that respond in a purposeful manner. A big part of this is setting up these programs uh, with a strong cross-curricular uh, component. 
grade six classes uh, while we were working through there we were working through uh, grid and matrix lessons in math having a culminative project in both cases brings in an English component as well as something that they can research at uh, we also focus on the soft skills such as project management teamwork and, pro and problem solving Art is something that robots actually excel at and is something that uh, gets students very excited. They have a lot of fun. And again, it reinforces a lot of the things that we're talking about before. If we talk about the math in terms of the timing and the distance being moved for drawing, uh, for the science uh, and how things actually look, how arcs are produced on that. It, it really is uh, great to watch uh, how the uh, students get excited about this. As I said, we worked with over 3,000 students over the last couple of years in various classrooms and I wanted to kind of share some of the things we learned. For the pre-high school uh, grades, we found that students were most successful when they worked in teams of two. This was something we had investigated uh, in the Ontario Science School uh, a Science Center uh, programs. We worked with their science school, and we worked with uh, robots in uh, with a single robot with individuals or teams of two, three, and four. And we found that two is the most positive, and that's something that we're working with here as well. For high school students, a ratio of one uh, robot to every student works best. Uh, but the work that is being presented to them is much more advanced. I talked about the importance of having homogeneous uh, PCs and really things work best when you have the same PCs with the same operating systems. And you know this is something that just simply is not possible in today's classrooms. For that reason, I highly recommend, regardless of the system being used, that some time is spent in the classroom understanding uh, the systems, which ones work best, and the procedures before you have any students present with you. To keep kids interested in presentations, I found incorporating characters from popular culture to be helpful in catching the students' eyes and holding them there. I've gone through a number of different cartoons and other characters and found that Futurama works best. Amazingly enough, I learned that Lego Harry Potter should be avoided because it distracts the students too much. The results that we're seeing are amazing. We are changing students' attitudes towards STEM. We survey all students, taking the 40% number of jobs that require advanced math and science as our target. We found that boys' interest in STEM goes from 26% to 62%, and we're really gratified to see that girls' interest reaches 63%, bringing them on par with boys. These results were borne out with two all-girls grade 8 classes we worked with in the last school year. Before our program, 25% of them were enrolled in advanced math and science for grade 9. After the program, the remaining 75% changed their enrollment to take advanced math and science. When we asked students uh, on a scale of 1 to 5 if they would recommend the program, we get an average of 4.7 or better. Typically, robots in the pre-high school grades are only brought out to students as an enrichment or club activ activity. This is really unfortunate because doing this only interests 17% of kids that would be considering this type of activity to begin with. All students can benefit from this and gain a new appreciation of STEM, encouraging to them to learn more about it uh, in high school and consider it as a career. It must... Uh, be recognized and emphasized that the purpose of these robotics programs that I'm talking about here is not to turn everyone into mathematicians, doctors, or engineers, but to give them a different perspective on STEM as well as give them some practical experience in it so that they can consider it in their future lives as well as use the skills, skills and knowledge that they gain in their later careers. I should also point out that the programs that we're working with are for all students. This is not something that we're just doing as an enrichment activity for a few kids. It is something that we are doing for all students and seeing these tremendous results. I thank you for uh, listening to what I have to say. I'd love to talk to you more about this. If you have any information about what we're doing, if you have any questions or, contact or comments, please contact me. Again, thank you for your time, and I look forward to talking to you.